Africans to seek to regain their independence from the colonial masters. Historians will remind us that we were first enslaved, that Africans were taken, and this we seldom say, the first civilization to take Africans out of this continent were the Arabs. And they took Africans from the eastern coast. And it is sad that in that part of the world, there are not many Africans who remained because it was in the business of the Arab enslaver to castrate Africans. We never say that. But we must say it, because it is historically significant. Then the Europeans came, the Portuguese came, the Spaniards came, the Germans came, the French came, the Belgians came. Africa became the hunting ground for the European colonizers, and we were the spot. We built, our ancestors built the United States of America. Our ancestors built Europe. And when slavery had lost its shine and sheen, the Europeans abolished it. But they replaced it with yet another pernicious enterprise, the colonization of Africa. The Europeans sat in Berlin, in Germany, in 1884, and they looked at the map of Africa and puzzled it out. The British had their share, the Germans had their share, and Tanzania, or Tanganyika, was their share, as was Rwanda and Urundi. The Spaniards were Johnny come lately in the arena, and they got little Equatorial Guinea and Southwest Africa. The French were here, the Portuguese were here, and we were colonized. This time round, they did not take us away. They came here, and they controlled us, and they told us, not in so many words, that we were children of a lesser God. And we were treated as if we were children of a lesser God. In fact, they told us that on the day of creation, we were merely hewers of wood and drawers of water. And if anybody were to doubt it in 1948, it was more blatant when Hendrik Fafut instituted the apartheid regime in South Africa. But yet there is a sense in which the God that we worship never sleeps. The colonial enterprise ran its course. And the European tribes, the Europeans never called themselves tribes, they called them nations, were engaged in a war. First in 1918, the European tribes fought. And they had something called the League of Nations, which died. Then they fought again in 1945. And what is unique about the European nations is that when they are engaged in tribal wars, they call them world wars. <laughs> so there was another war between 1945 1939 and 1945, and after that, a new kid on the block, the United States of America, took the lead in saying that colonialism was something that was undesirable. But at that time, Africans were never quiet. Those who had been taken out had already started agitating. Many of us here will remember Marcus Garvey, of whom Bob Marley says, Gavi was a buffalo soldier in the heart of America. And many of us will remember W.E.B. Dubois. Many of us 
will remember that they started agitating that Africans must regain their dignity and their independence. And indeed, in 1847, in Liberia, a small group of Africans were brought back in Monrovia, and Liberia became the first independent black nation in the continent of Africa. So soon thereafter, in Sierra Leone, they also created yet another colony. But Africa was colonized, except Ethiopia, which they tried to take in 1938 and exiled Professor Dr. Hale Selassie. And unfortunately, they were defeated, as you remember, in the Battle of Adowa. Africa can defeat European tribes. This history is necessary that we are able to appreciate the freedom that we gained. So that Gavi came, W.E.B. Du Bois came, but there was another crop after the 1940s who had had the advantage of European education. And there were people in Europe also who are beginning to recognize that indeed equality was necessary. And this was not anything new. In 1776 in the United States of America, the American state sitting in Philadelphia in the United States of America declared unto themselves that all men are born equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. A few years later in France, after the revolution, they also recognized that we were to be equal so that the colonized nations which had now taken Africans thought that they were safe. They had taken Leopold Sedar Senghor from Senegal to Paris and they thought that they were creating a little Frenchman. Little did they know that they were creating somebody who would want to overthrow them. They took Félix Oufé Boigny from Côte d'Ivoire and they thought that they were creating somebody who would be subservient to them. They took Ahmed Seko Touré and Modibo Keita, and they thought they were safe. Little did they know that they were creating the future leaders and agitators against French colonization. And it did not stop there. The Portuguese also took Agostino Neto and Amilcar Cabral and Eduardo Monlein to Lisbon. Little did they know that those individuals would be the catalyst that would be necessary in the process of decolonization. The British also had their fair share. They took others. They took Mwalimu Kambarage Nyerere, Hastings Kamuzu Banda, Kenneth David Kaunda, and many others to the United Kingdom, Jomo Kenyatta. Little did they know that those would be the individuals who sometimes later, and in Ghana, of course, they took the Osage for Kwame Nukuruma, and in Nigeria they took Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, and Sahar Madu Belo, the Sodaner of Sokot. <laughs> there is a sense, therefore, in which these individuals started recognizing that having been enslaved, having been colonized, we now had to liberate ourselves. And the agitation started, and Kwame Nukuruma and his Ghana acquired independence in 1957. And I still can hear Kwame Nukuruma through the vicissitudes of time, saying in Accra, Ghana, that Ghana is free and will never be colonized again. But the freedom of Ghana means nothing if the rest of Africa is not free. I can hear...